that this assembly is not the one we want. This is a disempowered assembly. But it is an assembly that will lead to the assembly that we want. So what you are saying is exactly what Mehbooba Mufti also says. Um, then why didn't the Gupkar um, alliance work? Well, that's something only she can answer. I didn't ask her to put candidates up in the parliament elections against the India bloc. And for the first time, Omar, you and Satyapal Malik are on the same page. I'm never on the same page as Satyapal Malik. Why Gandharbal and Badgam? Why two constituencies? I think it's important after what happened in the Baramula parliamentary election for the party to show we are a winning party. Badgam was part of uh, Baramula parliamentary constituency when I lost. And Gandharbal I've represented uh, as an MLA for six years. But was that a sense of insecurity? No. No, no in fact, it's the opposite. Are you also talking about fighting to bring back 370? Look, 370... Even Farooq Sahib said that it's so saal lag jayenge. Obviously, when he says so saal lagenge, he means that it's a long fight. He doesn't mean that exactly so saal or ek din ke baad ye ho jayega. Every election, there was one section which used to say that those who are taking part in the election are Indian agents. Actually, those who were saying this are today themselves willing to come forward and participate in elections. election. If you win, who's going to be Chief Minister? Namaste Jai Hind, you're watching or listening to the ANI podcast with Smita Prakash. This is exactly where Omar Abdullah is filing his nominations from Badgam in Kashmir. It's his second constituency. He's already filed his nominations from Gandharbal. And this is the second constituency, which he seems to have taken a quick decision just overnight to file from a second constituency. Omar Abdullah has been chief minister in the past. His father, Farooq Abdullah, has been chief minister also. My conversation with Omar Abdullah has been about his uh, term as Chief Minister, his father, terrorism in the state, militancy, the abrogation of Article 370 and more. Hope you enjoy the conversation as I speak with Omar Abdullah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abdullah. May I call you Omar if that's sure, okay please. with you? Go ahead. Uh, thank you for sparing the time. I understand it's a very busy time for you. Um, why Gandharbal and Badgam? Why two constituencies? Probably because uh, I think it's important after what happened in the Baramula parliamentary election uh, for the party to show uh, that uh, we are uh, a winning party uh, and that we can win uh, even in sort of difficult circumstances. Uh, Badgam was part of uh, Baramula parliamentary constituency when I lost. So I think that's an important part of it. And Gandharbal, I've represented uh, as an MLA for six years uh, when I was chief minister. Everybody. My grandfather, my grandmother, my father. Uh, so uh, it was a natural choice. Mm. So you don't want to leave one, but you want both. You want to contest from both. I want to win both. But was that a sense of insecurity? No. No. No, in fact, it's the opposite. Okay. Uh, it comes from wanting to show uh, that we can win a seat, an assembly. Look, I can't fight the Baramula parliamentary seat again, mm. but I can at least fight a part of that Baramula seat mm. uh, just to show uh, that uh, this is not what it's all about. Uh, okay. Um, yesterday, I saw a visual which, for me, it came as a surprise. I've seen your campaigning over the years. Uh, when you took off your cap in Gandharbal and said, vote for me, um, you know, my izzat and things. That was a different kind of an Omar compared to a couple of years ago. What's changed? I'm older. Uh, <laughs> I'm older. Uh, I'm uh, less given to sort of angry campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also reflective of uh, uh, the sentiment uh, in this election. And it's not about, I mean, uh, when I talk about respect, when I talk about uh, that feeling, it's not just about mine. Uh, it's about uh, the entire uh, Jammu and Kashmir, which feels uh, that their voice was disrespected, mm. that their voice wasn't heard, mm. uh, that nobody has bothered to, to uh, give any uh, sort of ear uh, to their sentiment and feeling. And this election is about seeking to restore uh, some of that, that lost respect or that respect that was taken from us. So. Uh, what I did was perhaps symbolic uh, of this fight being 
about that respect. It's about everybody's caps. It's about everybody's turbans. It's about everybody's respect. Uh, and that's what national conference is fighting for. But you're not given to making emotional appeals. You're not, at least in the past, you haven't been. Uh, it's well, that's, 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 style, sort of been right? that's sort of been used against me, uh, that I'm almost robotic, uh, <laughs> that I'm unemotional, that I don't connect. Uh, so, I mean, it's, that's, that's, that's not actually who I am. I mm. mean, obviously, we all have emotions at, at various levels. Uh, but you're not that kind, you don't exhibit them at least, They're, you're not, I mean... Yeah, that, that, that as somebody uh, today reminded me that uh, my father is Kashmiri, my mother is British and uh, sometimes uh, the sort of stiff upper lip British side uh, wins over, uh, which, is, which is perhaps the wrong side. Uh, mm -hmm. At least in Indian it's, politics. It's, 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 yeah, I mean, politics is about emotion. And, and more so this one. I mean, this election is taking place on the back of so much that has happened to Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. Uh, so it's just, I mean, it wasn't planned. It wasn't thought about. It wasn't discussed. It wasn't sort of war-roomed or war-gamed or anything like that. Hmm. Uh, it's just something that happened. Uh, it was spontaneous and, and that's it. So this, uh, uh, what we saw was Engineer Rashid standing against you when it was Lok Sabha. Um, now you have uh, that Freedom Chacha, Azadi Chacha, Sarjan Barkati. Has he filed? Uh, that's what people are saying that he I haven't be, heard whether he's filed yet. Uh, so he... if, uh, they, everybody seems to be saying that uh, there several candidates will be fighting against you in no, order No, isn't it? I mean, you know. Uh, Engineer Rashid was a, I mean, I would have put it down as a coincidence. I would have put it down as maybe the natural choice because Engineer had fought in 19 as well. Hmm. Uh, Engineer had in the past been an elected MLA hmm. from the area. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know whether Barkati has filed yet. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but if he does, then how come? Hmm. Why, why Gandharbal? What is the connect? Hmm. Uh, then, then, then questions start sort of creeping up. Uh, was engineer all that uh, it appeared to be? Mm. Or was uh, this part of some grander design? Mm. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Is there? I don't know. Well, look, so at the moment, Barkati is, is, at the is moment, a... At the moment, Barkati is a rumor. Uh, okay. It's a rumor that got a little bit of credence uh, with a couple of national newspapers splashing it as the gospel truth. Huh. Uh, but we only have a couple of hours more yeah. For nomination filing, what it's it's now what almost twelve o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nominations close at three. Huh. Uh, so in three hours we'll know whether Barkati has filed or not. And if he has, so be it. We'll so, deal with it. Uh, I'm going to quote a statement of yours from 2024 ju uh, July, where you said the people of JNK deserve better than a palace rubber stamp CM who will have to beg the LG to get his or her peon appointed. Uh, oh, they do. They absolutely do. So now when the you step the step to that look we're not. At, uh, we are not talking about the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir right now. We're talking about the Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. Correct. So right. if you and the this is not the assembly we want. This is not the assembly we deserve. But this assembly will lead to that assembly. Now, I understand, and, and this is where perhaps in politics it's always better to leave wiggle room. Uh, I was emphatic about not fighting the elections. Yeah. And my first instinct was not to. But people whose wisdom I, I, I respect, people whose judgment hmm. I, I respect, and even strangers, uh, strangers who have found my email address and written to me, strangers who have come across my telephone number and sent me messages on WhatsApp saying that, look, I'm a voter. If you don't trust the assembly of Jammu and Kashmir, how are you going to ask me to vote for it? If this assembly isn't good for you, why is it good for me? Why is it good for your colleagues, but it's not good for you? And that actually caused me to sit back and think, they're right. Hmm. If I don't believe in the assembly of Jammu and Kashmir, then I have no business asking the people of Jammu and Kashmir to vote for that assembly. Now, I'm not satisfied with this assembly. Hmm. This assembly in no way reflects what the assembly of Jammu and Kashmir should look like. But if we just go by the commitments of the Prime Minister and the Home Minister in the Parliament of India, then this assembly will lead to statehood. Statehood will lead to some sort of restoration of the respect that we feel was snatched away from us. Mm -hmm. So again, I make the point that this assembly is not the one we want. This is a disempowered assembly. 
but it is an assembly that will lead to the assembly that we want. So are you happy with the choice that you've made to fight the election now? Yes. Okay. Uh, the uh, abrogation of 370, that was a watershed moment. Uh, it has upset political equations to a large extent because one is seeing so many uh, independents who are fighting the election. Do you see this as a natural effect? No, but when didn't you see independents fighting? But so many of them? So many of them. And in the last, in not the last government, but in the 2002 government, if you remember when Mufti hmm. Saab formed an alliance with the, BJ, with the Congress, if I'm not mistaken, there were at least 14 or 16 independent MLAs at that time. Uh, and I know this for a fact because they were offering their support to us as well, hmm. uh, who were then kept in the, in the Lalit Hotel uh, and then became part of the Mufti Sayyid government. I think out of those 14, 15, at least 12 were ministers uh, for a while. But so you've had, you've had independents here. And the mushrooming of what, the what is What is changing? Yes, some uh, mushrooming of, of political outfits. Yeah. But to a large extent, uh, the parliament elections has queried the pitch for them. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, let's take, for example, uh, the party that was given so much importance by Delhi, uh, the Apni party or Valtaf Bukhari. Yeah. Uh, PDP virtually fell apart and sort of reformed in the form of Apni party. Today, Apni party has almost nobody. That's crashed and burnt. Well, literally. I mean, they lost yeah. their deposit in both the parliament seats that they formed. Yeah. What went wrong with them? What, in your opinion, was... I don't think the people of Jammu and Kashmir particularly Kashmir, are ready to take any party uh, that is born uh, from a relationship with the BJP. So they are still the shaitan, the untouchable, the BJP in Kashmir? Look, I don't like using words like shaitans and untouchables because they're not the right words to use. I don't think any political party or any political opponent should be disrespected like that. Uh, so no. I'm not going to use that and give somebody a headline that Umar calls BJP Shaitan. Uh, those are, that's not my language and it never would be. Uh, but yes, their political ideology and ours does not meet. Uh, there is no meeting ground between what the BJP wants for Jammu and Kashmir and what uh, parties like mine want for Jammu but and it, Kashmir. But several times you've been with them, whether you, your father... Yes, but those were, those were different. Uh, those, that was a different BJP. That was a BJP that talked about Insaniyat, Jamuriyat, Kashmiriyat. Uh, that was a BJP whose Prime Minister went to the LOC and said we can change our friends but we can't change our neighbours and that Pakistan will always be a neighbour and therefore we need to look to normalise relations. That was a BJP whose Prime Minister got into a bus and went to Minare, Pakistan. Uh, and so yet the country got a bloodied nose after that with Kargil. So yeah, was but it, then we also was bounced back from that. Was it pragmatic to do that? Of course it is. I mean your neighbours are not going to change. Hmm. We got bloody noses even after uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, descended, uh, surprisingly, for a wedding there. We got bloody noses after he invited Nawaz Sharif for his swearing in. So he too had uh, roast-tinted glasses True. on. But, but again, uh, your neighbours are not going to change. All you can do is try and change their attitudes towards you. Now, I'm not for a moment suggesting that uh, we can slip into a dialogue uh, right this moment. Hmm. Uh, but if somebody can tell me there is an alternative uh, to trying to normalize relations, I'm, I'm more than willing to listen. Because it's there even in your manifesto. You talk about normalizing relations yeah. and opening a dialogue. Uh, your father has also mentioned that there is no option uh, but to talk to uh, Pakistan in order for peace to be there in, um, in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, is that still the case? Do you still feel that? Because it kind of gives muscle to, pa uh, to Pakistan to have the Abdullahs all the time talk about the fact that without talking to Pakistan, normalcy cannot come in, that's okay. Well, Pakistan hates us. When has Pakistan ever liked uh, the National Conference or the Abdullahs? Uh, no political party uh, has been targeted more uh, by the terror in Jammu and Kashmir than the National Conference. This office you are sitting in uh, has seen thousands of our colleagues killed during the course of militancy. Uh, so, uh, let's not uh, make this mistake of assuming that Pakistan uh, is well disposed either towards my family or towards the party uh, that I belong to. But at this point of time, nobody is talking about Pakistan other than your dad. No, actually a lot of people are talking about it, but you don't take as much notice of them as you do of him. <laughs> okay, it's the media? No, that no, no, not just the up. media, but obviously you guys have a narrative that needs to go out. Uh, and. 
it helps to have somebody at least uh, that can be bashed on the head. He's the one who speaks all the time about it, right? He's the one who speaks but about foreign affairs. But he's not the only affairs. one. About foreign affairs, you hardly hear Mehbooba talking about it. It's you well, or that's, him? That's, that, well, that's surprising. Uh, I would have thought it would be something that she would be uh, pretty, uh, have pretty strong feelings about as well. But if she doesn't, then that's something only she can answer for. This election, when you're campaigning, when you go around, when you're listening, watching, uh, do you feel that things have changed because now there's no longer any slogans about Azadi, Khud Mukhtari, which used to be no, there No, Khud Mukhtari earlier. is very much a slogan. It was a slogan in the parliament election. Mm. Uh, it was a slogan uh, that was used, maybe not as resoundingly as in engineers' 19 election, uh, but it wasn't absent from the, abs from the election clay, uh, stage. Mm. Uh, a lot of the AIP's campaign at that time was about plebiscite, uh, was about Jammu and Kashmir not being an integral part of India. Uh, was about a solution beyond the four walls of the constitution. So it's not completely silent. And that uh, desire for uh, secession is still very much around? Or is it muted uh, for fear? Well, you, don't, you don't hear it as much. Now, why it's muted uh, can only be explained by those who used to, who used to speak about it. Huh. Now, the National Conference is a political party uh, that for whatever uh, disagreements you may have with us, uh, has never looked for a solution beyond the four walls of the constitution. Uh, we have always said that whatever happens in Jammu and Kashmir must flow from the constitution. Uh, so it's not for me to answer why uh, those voices that uh, were in disagreement with us uh, are now uh, heard far less than they used to be. Are they waiting, biding their time, you feel? I again can't say. I can't say. I ca look, I can't say whether there's been a change of heart. Uh, or uh, this is just a temporary phase. Again, that's only something they can answer. Because anybody we speak to, they say that in, in uh, Kashmir, peace or uh, the, the lack of this talk of Azadi is a tenuous situation. You never know when it could erupt. Is that the case? I, 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 I wouldn't discount what they're saying. I wouldn't. Uh, I think... Uh, History and, and our experience in Jammu and Kashmir has taught us uh, that more often than not, uh, a calm is a, is a tenuous one. Mm. Uh, but the longer this goes on, the better. See, um, before this election, before the 2024 Lok Sabha election, every election, there was one section which used to say that those who are taking part in the election are Indian agents. You, you got dubbed, uh, the NC gets dubbed very easily on that. Did you see a reduction of that kind of conversation happening? And are you seeing it in well, this Well, actually, those who were saying this are today themselves willing to come forward and participate in elections. Hmm. Uh, so that, again, uh, cannot be a bad thing. You yourself said that for those people for whom elections were haram, now it is halal. You said that that irked a number of people who said that here we are trying to come. We had been demonized. We wanted to be part of the elections, but we were demonized by the NC and PDP. And that's why How? we did How did NC and PDP demonize them? To say that they are separatists, militants, terrorists. We never said this. Hmm. We never fed them an agenda. We didn't give them slogans. We didn't ask them to actively boycott elections. Come on, you can't rewrite history. The least you can do is own up to it. The fact is that there were organizations here that actively campaigned to stop people from coming out to vote. Can we deny that? A lot of those leaders are still alive today who the moment elections were announced, the first thing they did was issue a statement saying that this election must be boycotted because elections achieve nothing. Uh, our goal is uh, an independent Jammu and Kashmir. So the narrative of the young lot uh, who are now taking part in the election is that it was the NC and the uh, PDP which used to back end these boycott calls so that you have a low uh, election electoral turnout and low e electoral turnout would mean either the NCP or the PDP wins the election every How? time. How? I mean, we won seats with high turnout. Uh, I mean, low turnout, a handful of seats, particularly in Sirinagar and areas like that, yes. Uh, but let's look at North Kashmir. 
always a, a, a respectable healthy turnout. Mm -hmm. uh, areas around Sirinagar, in Badgam, in Gandharbal, a healthy turnout. Mm -hmm. uh, still, National Conference won. Okay, last parliament election, you had by far the healthiest turnout. Which is why we lost know. one, yeah. but we want to. Hmm. We want to. Those elections weren't boycotted. I'm talking about the previous elections. No, but, but, that, but, then that, but then by that, by, by, the, that logic, by the logic you're using, hmm. we should have lost all three seats in parliament. Hmm. Okay. We should have. But you're not happy with the result, obviously, in the 2024 elections. Who's happy? I mean, point out one person to me who, after losing an election, says, oh, great, I'm glad I lost. Obviously, nobody's happy losing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask about the alliance that came about between you and the Congress. Was it difficult? Did you have to compromise as far as the seats are concerned? Well, look, all alliances are a compromise. Hmm. Uh, we were preparing and had prepared candidates for all seats. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure whether Congress had done the same, but I'm assuming hmm. uh, they would have done. Uh, we have obviously surrendered seats uh, that we had people ready for, that we believed uh, we were in a good position uh, to, I won't go as far as to say to win, but at least uh, put up a really good fight. Hmm. Uh, but yes, in any seat sharing, you have to, you have to surrender seats, and we did. Okay. Um there are some seats where it seems to be like a friendly contest kind of a situation. Mm. Why, why that? Why we, not we couldn't pull agree. out? We couldn't agree. Uh, okay. But the alliance, having an alliance uh, was too important to let five or six seats uh, jeopardize the whole thing. Uh, and therefore, look, we could have ended up with a, uh, a Madhya Pradesh type situation mm. uh, where the Congress just went completely alone. Uh, hmm. because they couldn't agree on six or seven seats to the Samajwadi party, etc., etc. Uh, but that would have been uh, futile. Is there a uh, meeting of minds as far as an agenda is concerned, a common agenda in a post-poll situation where uh, if you and uh, the Congress comes to power, are you together on the same page? Look, a post-poll agenda is always worked out post-poll. Hmm. Uh, so you don't expect either the National Conference or the Congress to start diluting its manifesto uh, before the first vote has been cast. So obviously, uh, the national conference, our candidates, will go out and fight on our manifesto. Uh, we don't expect the Congress to fight on ours. Mm -hmm. And similarly, the Congress will go out with their commitments and promises. They won't own ours. Uh, Post-poll uh, arrangement will obviously depend on post-poll uh, scenario. Because when you are campaigning, you're talking about local issues, you're talking about the, well, not the state, the UT issues now. Whereas when Rahul Gandhi campaigned, he made it seem like a little bit of a national issue. Because he said... Look, he's a national party. He will talk about national issues. He has uh, representation all the way to the east and the west, all the way down to the south. Kerala, yeah. Okay, uh, in, in probably soon. His sister will be fighting a parliamentary election from Kerala. Uh, the be-all and end-all of my political existence ends at Lakhanpur. Uh, the moment you cross into Punjab, I have no locus standi. Uh, so I have no reason uh, to, 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 to talk about issues that go beyond Jammu and Kashmir. What he said was that in one of his speeches, he said that Hamne Raja ko hataya and the BJP has brought a king and uh, he has his subjects. Um, so the contracts, the work, everything is being given out to Bahar ke log. Is that how you see it too? He's, he's not wrong. Hmm. He is not wrong. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to go into offices today uh, and find people in important positions who you can actually talk to, uh, who understand you, who, who you understand, who know the geography uh, of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, contracts are given to people from outside. Uh, businesses are sought to be handed over to people from outside. Uh, you are selling off prized assets of yours uh, for reasons that I don't understand. Where what you could, assets? Uh, uh, the Centaur Hotel, for one, uh, is being given to an industrialist from Bombay. You are looking to get rid of the club in Pahalgam. You are looking to get rid of JKTDC huts in Pahalgam. And all of this is being rushed through so that you can try and do it before an elected government uh, comes into to office. You were trying to rush through the lithium mining uh, so that you could probably uh, keep one of your friends happy before an elected government comes here. Uh, contracts for uh, toll collection on highways, uh, nobody is, is from here. Uh, mining of, of sand from rivers, 
largely outsiders. Look, it's not without reason. Look, I mean, again, this narrative was sought to be created that 370 was something that Kashmiris loved and Jammuites hated. It's not without reason that the BJP's vote share in Jammu shrunk drastically in this parliament election. The margins of victory for both candidates in Jammu and Udhampur are half of what they were in the election in 2014. If 370 was a Kashmir-specific issue that Jammu was happy to see the back of, you should have seen margins in Jammu jump in favor of the BJP. But you haven't, because the narrative that has sought to be created around 370 was false. And the people of Jammu and Kashmir have not benefited from it being written down. Hmm. And uh, Jammu, you feel that this time is going to be the Congress which will score more than the BJP? I'd like to think so. I, I, I know for a fact that the, jump, that the Congress will do better uh, than a lot of people expect them to do. Look, there's a lot of simmering anger in Jammu. On, on an issue as simple as the Darbar move, people are unhappy. You, you basically crippled the economy of Jammu when you, when you uh, shut down the Darbar move. Jammu economy depended a lot on government employees coming from Kashmir in the winter. They spent a lot of money there. They hired accommodation. For six months, the place boomed. You, you talk about tourism. How much of that tourism actually goes to Jammu? Almost nothing. Because the train takes Yatris directly to Katra. The Yatris who land by air, come straight to, from the airport, get into their car, go to Katra, get into a helicopter, fly up to Mata, do darshan and come back. Jammu is crying uh, for some sort of economic sustenance, which they used to get from the Darbar move, they don't. What would you like to do differently then? I would like to reverse a lot of these things that were done. Such as? Such as uh, the Darbar move to start with, for Jammu at least. For Kashmir, we need stronger domicile laws. We need domicile laws that at least bring us at par with other parts of the country. Today, we have weaker domicile laws than our own neighbor, Himachal. Hmm. Try and do what you are able to do in Jammu and Kashmir in Himachal today. You won't be able to. But n nobody can come and buy up land, agriculture Where? land in, in, uh, in Jammu Of course they Jammu can. No. Of course they can. In Kashmir, our, our domicile laws are the weakest in the country today. This is what was said when Article 370 would be taken away, was taken away, uh, where uh, Dr. Abdullah said that यहाँ पर Gaza की स्थिति हो जाएगी, that uh, that uh, BJP, yeah, that he compared the situation and he said there'll be settlements out here, uh, just like it's there and like Israeli settlements in in the uh, occupied areas. That's what's going to be happening out here. But two years have gone by, not even the pundits have returned. Forget about others returning. Yeah. So nobody's come. Well, not yet. So then why are you so scared that other outsiders not, but will I'm, But I'm actually glad uh, that you've now, uh, in the course of trying to sort of catch us in what we've said, rendered one of the uh, biggest claims of the uh, uh, BJP hollow, uh, which was 370 was the reason for the pundits leaving from here. And that if 370 is removed, uh, Kashmiri pundits will come back. And now you yourself have said two years later, in fact, if anything more have left, yeah, so uh, nobody has come back. Nobody has. Yeah. So what was the fear about anyway? The, it, it's a genuine fear because lands are being given away. Government lands are being given away to people who to don't. Who? It's, it's people, uh, there are many women who married non-Kashmiris who went and bought land that I know of, they said they, they were not allowed to buy land. They are Kashmiris, born Kashmiris. No, I have no married. problem with that. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Uh, it is a move to settle people here. And the, the voter lists show you. Uh, people who do not belong to Jammu and Kashmir who are now uh, buying land and settling down here. Why would anybody want to because of the fear of this? That they will, they will not have any rights. It could go back to the situation. Why they didn't? Why even the Look, nobody, nobody is saying uh, that people should not have rights. We are saying we should have the first right over our own land, over our own water, over our own rivers, over our own resources. What is wrong in that? If you give the first right to people in other states, uh, why not here? Let's, let's make a very simple comparison. So who has let's, 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 no, no, let, wait. let's make a very simple comparison. Right. Are you in a position to buy land in Ladakh today? No. You're not. Yeah. Why? Because of the protected area. So right. Same so, thing here? so why? No, you are. You can buy land here. You can buy land in Jammu and Kashmir today. But you cannot buy land in Ladakh. We were born of the same territory. We were split from the same state. We had the same protection of 370 removed from us. Why is it that today, Smitha Prakash cannot go to Ladakh and buy land to settle. 
But you, if today you were to go to a dealer and identify a plot of land and put the money down, that land would be notarized and transferred to you. Similarly, Omar Abdullah can buy in Gurgaon. Hmm. Omar Abdullah can buy. So you are a Kashmiri, you can buy land anywhere in the country, right? Other than the protected areas, hmm. which is you can't buy in Nagaland if you go, you can't buy so in why? Nagaland. So why? So why? Are, so why? Yeah. So if, if you if, want that... No, no, I, look, if it is one rule for the entire country, hmm. then don't have protected areas, no? And why should we not be protected then? Okay, so don't have protected areas would also mean don't have special status. So then. don't then, but then don't have it for anybody. Hmm. How do you how do you explain just taking it away from us? Ultimately, what you gave to them was also a sovereign commitment, whether in the form of 371, ABC, etc. Why take it away from us? So, as far as I recall, that whether it is uh, the northeast, some states in the northeast, uh, it was to preserve the uh, the balance of culture, balance. So, of do we not deserve to have our culture protected? हाँ तो फिर the same can be फिर of Kerala तो करिए किसने रोका आपको कहने का मतलब मेरा सिर्फ इतना ही है कि if you are giving protected areas and special status then why did you feel the need to take away ours either either look when you very I mean you say one country one rule you can buy land in Gurgaon you can buy land here then it should be the same rule for everybody but if you have areas of protected uh, status for cultural reasons or whatever reasons, then explain to me why we did not deserve the same if it was given to us at the time of accession. So you were in government, na, Omar Saab. Why didn't you do it when you do were what? there? When you we didn't take it away. You took it away from us. We were not in government when it was taken away from us. All that was done to us was done without the permission of the assembly. You split Jammu and Kashmir into two parts and made us into a union territory. Who was asked? Who was consulted? What, what exercise did you do to determine whether the people support this or not? None. Even parliament barely discussed it. For everything that happened to Kashmir, people would, if it was unfair, people went out on the roads. They protested, they complained. But how come for this, there were no street protests? Did you let anybody out? They did come out. Who came out? When they you wanted to. You hardly let anybody out. Hmm. Who did you let out? This place was a was a prison for months on end. Um, we were talking about the period when people came out on the streets and didn't come out in the streets. Earlier, when the stone pelters would come out, choti si choti baat pe they would come out and sometimes not even for a reason. Yahan nikal ne kahan diya logon ko? The kind of restriction, I don't know whether you were able to visit at that yes. time. You were? Uh, we, I came just before that. And did you see a very normal... No, obviously I didn't. There, there is no normal in uh, Srinagar, at least. There isn't, no? Yeah, there's never been a normal. This is the... Well, tell you, then, then, of... then what was 370 about? Hmm. 370 was about normalizing. But, but now, if there is no normal, then what was it about? What you're seeing now, do you think this is normal or this is a new normal? How, how is this any different to pre-89? Other than the fact that we have no 370. Hmm. So, I mean, this is the problem I, when, I, when I ask uh, that ultimately what was 370 about? Because if it was about bringing us at par with the rest of the country, you haven't. Hmm. You still have sort of areas of special status. You only took ours away. And I, I'm sorry, again, you, I mean, the government of India took ours away. Okay, so leave that aside. It wasn't about restoring democracy because the government of India has kept this place as a totally undemocratic, central ruled protectorate for the last five, six years. So it wasn't about that. Mm. It wasn't about governance and development because we've seen none. Mm. It wasn't about Kashmiri Pandits coming back because in your own question, you've said that nobody has come back in the last two years. They are not They're sure. Not. And then, so it, it wasn't about normalizing because again, uh, Kashmir is not normal. Mm. So then what was 370 about? So in your manifesto, you talk about bringing back uh, the Kashmiri Pandits uh, with keeping their dignity or something. That's the term that you use. Uh, how do you plan to do that? By doing what we started uh, doing with Dr. Manmohan Singh's government. Which uh, is? Encouraging them to come back by taking care of their economic needs and their security needs. Putting them in camps? Or no, what? absolutely not. There is a reason why that accommodation is called transit accommodation. It is transitory in nature. You come there, you stay for a while, you settle in, settle down with your job, and then you find place to stay. And a lot of Kashmiri Pandits actually moved on 
from transitory accommodation. They actually moved into areas and started staying. Imagine that they couldn't find it, they couldn't find the strength to, uh, to trust an LG appointed by a BJP government. Would they trust? A Look, I don't expect them to trust my word. I would expect them to trust our deeds. If we are able to create a sense of security that we had done when they started coming here and picking up these jobs and working, uh, I believe uh, we can reverse some of the uh, sort of setbacks that we've had in recent years. You know, um, I want to uh, come to something which is a hot topic these days, which is the IC814, the movie which was, uh, the series which has come on Netflix. And there's a lot of conversation which is happening back and forth on this, whether the depiction which has happened in the series is correct or not. Uh, in that, there's a small portion in which your father is protesting and saying that I don't want to uh, release uh, the terrorists and I don't, especially Latram, he said, Ki usko to nahi chodna and things. And then Mr. Dullath, who was the raw chief at that time, he said, he went on Veer's show and he said that uh, this happened. I went to talk to uh, Dr. Saab and he refused and he said, I will resign. Then he says, I went with Dr. Saab to the governor. Um, and I think it was Gary Saxena then. Uh, and he went to the governor and said that, uh, I want to quit. And then they said, okay, fine. And he said that we got the scotch out and then we talked about it and said that, look, there is no option. We have to, we have our citizens uh, in the aircraft. Your father did say that the, that the state would pay a heavy price for it. This is the second time my father was forced to release people. With Rubaya Saeed. Exactly. And, you, and, and the families of the hijack, of the, uh, the hijack victims. They used the Rubaiya Sayyad incident as, as the, the benchmark. They, and rightly so. They said when you could release terrorists for a home minister's daughter, is our family uh, not precious? Why is it only she is precious to the country? Then if she is precious to you, then our family is precious to us. So we set a, we set a benchmark that, that had to be followed. You were not in India when the Rubaiya Sayyad incident happened. You were in America. No, I was. I think I was in Bombay. Weren't you in America at that time? No, no, I was in Bombay. Okay, I was you, in college in Bombay. In college in Bombay. Uh, when you look back at, your, at the decisions that your dad took at that stage as chief minister, do you think he had an option? I, I think government of India uh, closed those options. I think government of India had an option. Uh, I think government of India uh, at the Rubaiya Seth kidnapping time had an option of not negotiating with terrorists. Uh, they chose to negotiate. Uh, after that, uh, once you've done it once, uh, then you have to do it again. Okay. Um, when, when it came to the uh, IC814, uh, then also when your father objected to it, uh, similar kind of situations happened when you were chief minister, when not a hijacking, but there were several instances where militants were caught, they were put in jail. There were times when hangings happened of... Uh, one. One, yeah. yeah. Of that, Afzal and I can't Guru. say, Afzal Guru happened in your time. Uh, you faced the blowback. Uh, or your state faces the blowback and you are... Uh... See, my unfortunate thing was that the JNK government had nothing to do with Afzal Guru's execution. Otherwise, you would have had to do it with the permission of the state government, mm -hmm. which I can tell you in no uncertain terms would not have been forthcoming. Why? It wouldn't have. We, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have done it. I don't believe that uh, any purpose was served by executing him. I don't. Do you believe in capital punishment? No. No? No. Okay. Because I don't believe in the infallibility of, of the system of the courts. And evidence has shown us time and time again uh, that may not be in India, but in places uh, where you have executed people and then found that you were wrong. You, in your manifesto, you've talked about releasing uh, political prisoners. Can you tell me what, who you mean in this? Those who have been unfairly detained over the last few years. Your opponents say that some of them were put in by your administration. They're still languishing there. Well, then why weren't they freed? That's what I want to know. Well, they will be. And these will include the OGWs also? Do you feel that they, they are... No, don't get into specifics. Uh, that's, that's for an elected government to do. Uh, there, I think there is, a, there, is a, there is a distinction that will be drawn uh, between political prisoners, OGWs, uh, people who have been involved in severe and serious incidents of violence, uh, and a lot of others who have just been jailed uh, because they put a like on a Facebook post. Uh, there are any number of people uh, who today are facing the brunt of, of uh, the administration simply because they've expressed a view uh, on social media. Okay. Um, let me go back to the period when uh, you were chief minister, when it, it was 10 years ago. 
uh, it really seems just the other day, but there's so much that has happened uh, in the state since then. Uh, ten years ago, when you know, when that that stone pelting that was more than ten years ago, I think 2010, 2011, when the stone pelting uh, stone pelting incidents happened and the crackdown upon them. When you look back at that time. Uh, do you think that you did something wrong or do you feel that you could have done Look, something better? any situation better? that is dealt with that results in people dying uh, clearly could have and should have been handled better. Hmm. Uh, but sadly, uh, what we were dealing with was, was unexpected uh, in both its intensity and its spread. Uh, what is unfortunate, what I feel is that, uh, what I feel bad about is that the lessons we learned uh, and put into place so that we ensured that it wasn't repeated uh, during the term of my government and for the first two years of the BJP government, unfortunately were undone in 2016. What happened in 2016 which you feel that was undone? Well, clearly the lessons that we learned in 2010 weren't uh, sort of weren't uh, utilized uh, and that's why we had uh, another spate of, of deaths dealing with a law and order situation. But you remember during your time there was the shutdown calls, there was the calendar which used to come out, there was Gilani Saab who had his own uh, agenda in place. You were dealing with a Hurriyat which was still muscular at that stage. Then came the era where they were all put in behind bars and slowly and surely the shutdowns are over, the calendar is over, the Hurriyat is uh, defanged. If you were to come in as Chief Minister, it would certainly be an easier tenure as compared to what it was, right? Well, I don't, I mean, uh, let's not assume anything. Uh, A, I'm not even going to assume uh, Chief Ministership uh, mm -hmm. is an inevitable uh, outcome. Uh, we are right now fighting as Assembly elections. Uh, we have no idea what sort of mandate the people will give. Whoever comes in as Whoever Chief comes. Minister. Whoever comes. Right? Isn't that, isn't it an easier uh, situation, security situation in this so-called Naya Kashmir as compared to what was the Purana Kashmir? Well, actually, in some respects, it's a tougher security situation. Why? Because you opened up a whole new front in Jammu. Jammu was entirely peaceful uh, when I left office. And conveniently, people forget all about that. Uh, you've actually created a real, the government of India has created a real mess for the incoming government to deal with. Uh, with the security situation in Jammu today, whether it is Kathua, Samba, Jammu, Riyasi, Udhampur, Rajori, Ponch, Doda, you tell me which area isn't facing uh, terror attacks and strikes against our security forces. We've lost more than 55 uh, army personnel in, in, in 12 months. Uh, Jammu is a huge problem for an incoming government. So, you know, the BJP likes to say that if the national conference is elected, militancy will start again. Actually, it's the reverse. They have given birth to militancy in Jammu uh, during their term. And an incoming government is going to have to deal with the mess uh, that they have created. So the, uh, the narration always was that it was Park-sponsored terrorism which uh, you know, affected It's very convenient. Kashmir. It's always Park-sponsored terrorism when the BJP or the central government is on the receiving end. Uh, but when uh, it's the national conference that has to be targeted, then suddenly it's our inability, our, uh, uh, our weak governance, uh, our bad decisions. Uh, it's very convenient. Either it's park sponsored for everybody or then it's park sponsored for none. Sure. Uh, what I meant to say was that it was park sponsored north of the Pir Panjal. Now it's park sponsored south of the Pir Panjal. Is that yes, but then why did you allow that situation to develop? Hmm. It was all under control. What did you do that caused uh, Jammu to slide backwards like this? Clearly mistakes have been made. Gaps have been created. Your anti-terror grid has been significantly weakened. Your intelligence network uh, has been weakened. Uh, and these are all things that will have to be uh, put back into place. Militancy, terror attacks don't just disappear overnight. Uh, it's a slow, steady process. So do you think that the BJP took its eyes off the ball as far as Jammu is concerned? Clearly. I think it was a combination of two factors. One, uh, overconfidence in terms of Jammu to ab theek hai, ab isko kuch ho sakta. And uh, secondly was Ladakh. Uh, the incursions in Ladakh meant you had to suddenly find troops. You didn't want to move troops out of Kashmir, so you moved them out of Jammu. The moment you moved them out of Jammu, you left a vacuum. Uh, and that vacuum now has created a problem for you. So it's only the area of operation which has changed what you're saying for the militants? They've shifted focus. Okay. Um, you know, um, when I was talking about your uh, tenure as Chief Minister, another thing that happened, which you mentioned in another podcast, was about the situation uh, caused due to the floods. 
and your handling of that situation because your party got blamed or your government got blamed then for uh, being frozen in action probably or taking uh, steps which were too yeah, little too with late. With hindsight, uh, I now, I mean, one uh, obviously realizes uh, that a lot of that was very convenient narrative building uh, because we had an assembly election that was coming up for which the BJP had set itself uh, up ki bar, uh, 45 bar. Mm. Uh, otherwise, if, if an objective assessment had been done of how uh, my government dealt with the floods, I would not have been uh, crucified uh, the way I was. It was literally uh, one issue a day with you in those 10 years that you were there. It I, was exhaustive, oh. right? With every no, we had good years. We had some very good years. Hmm. Uh, we had incredibly peaceful, uh, productive uh, tourism development uh, years in 2011, 2012, for the most part of 2013. Uh, the first half of 2014 was great until the floods came. Uh, so no, I can't, I won't for a moment say that it was uh, six years of nothing but trouble. If you come back to power, what are you promising the people? Uh, is it, one of course you're talking about restoration of statehood. Are you also talking about fighting to bring back 370? Look, 370, the special status of Jammu and Kashmir is part of the National Conference's political ideology. Hmm. Uh, so it's not something that we are going to just surrender. Mm. That said, we're also realistic enough to know that that's not something this assembly is going to do. Mm. It's not something that you're going to do with, be able to do with this current government. You'll probably need a couple of changes of government in the center uh, before it's something that you can even begin to address. Look, it took the BJP decades to do. We're not foolish enough to believe that we're going to undo it in five years. It's a long struggle, but it's an issue that we believe is important to keep alive. Farooq but it's not the be-all and end-all of our, of, of our campaign. It is not the only issue on which we're fighting elections. In fact, it's important to remember that our manifesto talks about uh, these political issues in perhaps a paragraph or two. That's it. Our entire manifesto is governance and development related. It talks about jobs. It talks about social welfare schemes. It talks about uh, electricity, water, free education. It talks about uh, helping people uh, tied through this uh, uh, crisis of, of heavy prices and price increases. So there's a whole lot in our manifesto. I know it's tempting to look at just the, the, the one paragraph on the politics of Jammu and Kashmir, but that's not what our manifesto is because all about. Because even Farooq said that in one of his speeches, he said, Saw saal lag jayenge, uh, shayad, to bring I, back. Look, nobody has a hmm. crystal ball. Hmm. Uh, that can tell you okay, it will take you 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 years. Obviously, when he says, so saal lagenge, he means that it's a long fight. He doesn't mean that exactly so saal or ek din ke baad ye ho jayega. Because that's it's, something it's, the it's, parliament... Look, it's indicative. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, I mean, it's like a metaphor. You're just saying, that, look, it's a long fight. It's a long struggle. And again, I make the point. When the BJP was reduced to two MPs in parliament, did anybody believe that they would be in a position to do anything on, on 370 or the Ram Mandir. But things changed and it took decades to reach that point. The Congress says it's a closed chapter yes, after well, the court decision. We'll How do you deal with Look, that? Because the, court an ally. the court decision does not close the chapter. Okay. Because if the court decision closed the chapter, then when a three-judge bench found in favor of 370, not once but thrice, hmm. then why wasn't it a closed issue then? Hmm. If it wasn't a closed issue then, then it's not a closed issue now. It's a court decision. Court decisions can be changed. Hmm. A five-judge bench can be overturned by a seven-judge bench. A seven-judge bench can tomorrow be overturned by the entire bench sitting. Hmm. So, let's not say it's a closed issue. That said, it is not an issue that we believe is in any way, shape, size or form going to be resolved in the life of this assembly. This assembly is about giving us the assembly that we want, the state that we want and start putting into place corrections for what was done over the last five, six years. So what you are saying is exactly what Mehbooba Mufti also says. Um, then why didn't the Gupkar um, alliance work? Well, that's something only she can answer. I didn't ask her to put candidates up in the parliament elections against the India bloc. Uh, that's a choice she consciously made. And she made that choice consciously after I had told the Congress party that, look, there is no scope in five seats of which the National Conference already held three for any sort of seat sharing arrangement unless the Congress was willing to sacrifice one of their seats. Hmm. But as long as the PDP helps the alliance, 
we're open to talks about seat sharing in the assembly elections. Clearly, that wasn't acceptable to her. She fielded three candidates here and did nothing to help the alliance in the two seats in Jammu. So that's what it is. Well, why did the alliance came together under very trying uh, circumstances in Kashmir? Yeah, but the alliance never came together as an electoral alliance. Uh, hmm. Nowhere in the Gupka Declaration. What else is, is an alliance if it's not? No, for it's about ideology. Purposes. It's about a common fight. It was about a fight for bigger things, which we did. Uh, even though the, PD, the PDP wasn't part of any uh, case in the Supreme Court uh, to overturn what was done on the 5th of August, there was. Uh, sort of cooperation and, and uh, a common fight that was waged there. So another person who fought the election against you when we interviewed him, he said that BJP keeps calling this as Gupkar gang, Gupkar gang and every time they demonize uh, the Gupkar uh, alliance, uh, it increases their stature. I wish they would say that about me and it would increase my stature too. Sorry, so, who was this? Sajjad. What can I say? Look, stature is not given by it's not a gift bestowed on anybody by the BJP or, or uh, the media or anybody. You get what the people give you. Uh, mm. Now, it's nobody's fault, least of all the BJPs or the national conferences. Mm. In fact, if anything, the BJP did him a huge favor. Had the BJP not transferred migrant votes to him, he would have lost his deposit in this election. He saved his deposit because the BJP engineered about 7,000 migrant votes for him which is surprising because given his track record of being part and parcel of the whole movement that caused Kashmiri Pandits to leave here right in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, for them to vote for him is a huge change yeah. in their outlook. But they did it and clearly at the behest of the BJP. Yeah, his politics emerged from the Hurriyat because of, of his did. father. I mean, his, his, his father was, was instrumental in, in creating the Hurriyat. Uh, in, in not just the Hurriyat, but in, in militancy starting in Jammu and Kashmir. And his, I mean, they, they ne they've never denied it. No, they haven't. Yes, that's true. Uh, another factor which has happened now suddenly uh, is uh, the, the arrival of Ram Madhav in the... Uh, in that the, was a surprising one. I did not see that coming. And for the first time, Omar, you and Satyapal Malik are on the same page. I'm never on the same page as Satyapal Malik. Uh, okay. It would be impossible for me to be on the same page as Satyapal Malik. If I was to see no a matter, fax machine, no matter, you know? no matter all the nice things he may say, oh. I don't think any of us can ever forget that it is his signature that was instrumental with what happened to us in 2019. Hmm. Uh, now he can claim that he had no idea that the Home Minister sent him the papers uh, that very morning and said, Inko daskat karo. Are you that much of a rubber stamp? You should have quit. Hmm. You should have had the courage of your convictions to quit. You should have been like B.K. Nehru. When Indira Gandhi asked B.K. Nehru to engineer the dismissal of my government in 84, he said no, even though he was Indira Gandhi's relative. He said, I will not do it. And she sacked him and replaced him with, with Jag Mohan. So we have had governors who've had the courage of their convictions. We've had Governor N.N. N. Vora uh, who had the courage of his convictions and, and many others. Satyapal Malik could have had the courage of his convictions and said, I will not do this. You do anything with me, I will not do this. But he did it. So I will never be on the same page as Satyapal Malik. But he's the one who's saying that uh, Ram Madhav has been sent out here for, with a definite purpose of defeating uh, you. Well, obviously, the BJP wants to defeat us and I'm glad they do. I would be worried if the BJP wanted us to win. No, but the idea, the manner is to uh, set up independent candidates uh, TK, they have the money, they have the muscle, they have the administration, they have the agencies. Uh, they can do it. Those but very agencies used to be supportive of you at one point of time. Really? Weren't they? I don't know. You tell me. Because they, every time that one heard was that the agencies feel that here are the Abdullahs who always speak and have taken oath on the Indian constitution we as did. compared to the we others. We did, but we did so, nobody a favor. We did it out of our conviction. Uh, we did it because we truly believed that uh, the decision Jammu and Kashmir made in 1947 was the right one. Uh, hmm. And that what would flow in Jammu and Kashmir would flow from the spirit of the constitution and the promises made to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And I still believe that to be true, in spite of what was done to us in 2019. We never did anybody a favor. But, but the fact is that these very same agencies then used that uh, to detain me in 2019. My PSA warrant said what? that I, I, I brought people out to vote against the boycott calls of the Hurriyat. Uh, so you punished me uh, for effectively uh, taking a stand against Pakistan and its boycott calls. So well done. What was that like when you were detention. in detention? Take care. How Rath many months were there? Eight plus. Eight plus months. I saw the interviews uh, that you did after that. It was a complete... Firstly, when you came out, 
आफ्टर डिटेंशन विद बियर्ड एंड ऑल ये हो क्या गया है लाइक ही लुक्स लाइक ही इज जस्ट हैड सम काइंड ऑफ इनिशिएशन रिलीजियस इनिशिएशन आर वी गोइंग टू सी द अदर वन द स्नीकर्स एंड जीन्स एंड शर्ट गाय कैरिंग हिज ओन बैग अगेन आई स्टिल कैरी माई ओन बैग आई स्टिल वे जीन्स स्टिल गो फॉर अ जॉग आई स्टिल डू यू स्टिल डू दैट ओके बट वॉट हैपन देन वॉट वॉज दैट द चेंज दैट हैपन टू यू I don't think it's possible to quantify it but obviously the person who went in is not the person who came out when you came out i saw some of your interviews and you seemed a little um, bitter as compared to I your still own. am I I still am look who wouldn't be who wouldn't be i think the only difference is for most people here they keep that bitterness under the surface they don't express it for fear of what will happen uh, i'm a bit more moopart uh, you 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 get what I mean, because you, you kept saying i'm not i'm not the same person i'm, I'm changed look who can be i mean other than leave aside the detention the fact that a country can go back on sovereign commitments made to its people is something that i will never be able to come to terms with these were not the promises of an individual or a political party they were the sovereign commitments of the union of india with the people of jammu and kashmir which facilitated accession Jammu and Kashmir without that would not have been a part of the Union of India. We were the only Muslim majority territory that acceded to India. But clearly that was forgotten and this whole thing about it being temporary, I mean that's chalo leave it now we won't get into that argument but hmm. that's a discussion for another day. Uh, your dad had been your granddad had been in prison for several years after that. Did when he came out? Do you recollect having conversations in your family? Any, I was, I was, no. five, I was five or six. What when I meant was, ended. do you recollect any conversations in your family where they talked about that kind of detention and the effect it had on your family? Well, obviously, it had a, 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 a deep effect on my my grandmother because for the longest time her husband was out, hmm. uh, as in a way, yeah. uh, she was the one who had to sort of not only guide the family but also uh, help the party along. Uh, it would have obviously had an impact on my father and his siblings because mm. for the longest time their father wasn't around mm. uh one of He the reasons one the of time. the reasons why my father has two dates of birth uh is because my grandfather was in jail uh when he had to fill his forms i think i guess for his matriculation exam uh and the uncle just gave a date uh, because my grandfather was not there to to tell people uh what day my father was born so there's there's all sorts of stuff that that happened he was put in prison by the congress government you were put in prison by the bjp government the abdullah yeah, there's a huge difference yeah my grandfather was away for years on end i spent barely 8 months 8 months right uh, there's this picture which uh, my which sister, sister tweeted tweeted can you explain what was happening out here the arrival of a little bit of facial hair on you yeah That's, this was how old were you eight, this must have been 80 87 86 87 so i was yeah okay. 16 17 uh and your sisters are next to you yeah uh, well no. one, yeah one of my my sister my mom uh, who's who's on your right on my my right my right is my, my the sister who's closest to me in age then my mom that is which is uh, safia safia the one who treated it ha huh. then the two girls uh, standing in front of uh, mr rajiv. rajiv gandhi and sonia ji are uh, my two younger sisters and then of course there's rahul priyanka and my dad and your two younger sisters uh hina who is standing in front of rajiv ji and uh, sara who uh, is being held by mrs gandhi okay what what did you guys do did you guys actually uh, prime minister rajiv gandhi Uh, came uh, to Srinagar by road huh. probably the last time a prime minister came from to where? Kush- from jammu okay uh, he was driving i i i suppose he flew into jammu huh. uh, and then had his vehicles there and he drove he came by the national highway huh. uh, to Srinagar that winter the idea was to go up to gulmarg and have lunch hmm. uh, but it snowed so heavily hmm. uh, that the snow cutters couldn't clear a road uh, all the way up to gulmarg hmm. so we ended up having to stop in tangmarg to have lunch which of course we were bitterly disappointed by because we were looking forward to gulmarg uh, but uh, so this photograph was taken in tangmarg after lunch just outside the guest house where we ate and i was thrilled on this particular day uh, because i love vehicles of any shape size or form was it your first time that you met with no i met him before i met him before but i was fascinated with that jeep of his 
That's uh, the one the King the of rust, Jordan the gave rust colored, him. The, the, yeah. the brown rust colored Jeep, yeah, yeah. which I absolutely loved. He drove in uh, in that Jeep to cast the vote for the last time. Probably. In, yeah. he came I in remember with seeing Sonia. that Jeep in yeah. Delhi, but I got to ride in that vehicle with him. Huh. Uh, with Rahul, with Rajiv Gandhi ji driving, my dad sitting in front, Mrs. Gandhi and my mom in the back and me squeezed in the middle. In the fifth? Yeah, oh, okay. in the middle. And I, I mean, that was my day. Yeah. Uh, the fact that not only had I seen the vehicle up close, but actually got to, to sit in it was, was huge. So did your dad, as in childhood, did your dad drag you to all political... No. No, no very few. I was up in boarding school. In uh, Sanat? I went for a handful of functions in between, uh, huh. but very rarely. Okay. Uh, do you, do so you do I that remember you? a few with my grandfather, particularly Eid prayers, stuff like that. Huh. Uh, I remember things like uh, Christmas in the army, uh, Northern Command in Udhampur. And I remember we had recently returned from England. So for us, Christmas was Father Christmas and the reindeers. Hmm. Uh, and in this case, because in Udhampur, you couldn't find reindeer. Uh, so Father Christmas came down the mountain on a donkey. Okay. Uh, and we okay. found that particularly fascinating very odd but yeah yeah and i remember that because my cousin was was petrified of of father huh. christmas so howled but yeah these are strange things that one remembers do you take your children for these kind of meetings my kids are now old enough to to make their own decisions but yeah they do help out they help out are they helping in your campaign they will uh, they they've made a start Okay, I, before I wind up, I have to ask you about this, which made a lot of social media, especially the right-wing uh, handles. They were talking about uh, when the uh, American diplomats came to meet you and met with others. Uh, they were talking about how the Americans want to now uh, make inroads into the political system out here again, all over again. Who allowed them to come? Hmm. Government of India. Yeah. No diplomats, no foreign media people are able to visit Jammu and Kashmir without the express permission of the Ministry of External Affairs, the Ministry of Home, in consultation with agencies here and the government of Jammu and Kashmir. So any meeting that I had uh, with this team from the US Embassy was cleared uh, at the highest level uh, in the government of India. No conversation was had with them about uh, the sort of what I think would be the, the result in the elections or how I see the elections going. Obviously, we discussed it, about, we talked about Jammu and Kashmir, about the situation, uh, we talked about the wider Indian context, but that was it. Hmm. Uh, I was, I, I, in fact, I myself was surprised that they got permission to meet me because uh, they came last year around the same time and other than uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Manoj Sinha, uh, they weren't, and maybe a handful of the Delhi-backed parties, they weren't able to meet anybody. But those who have long memories of Kashmir know about the American uh, influence in Kashmir. Either Huriyat I'm had not worried about the Guardian American influence Angel. as much as the Pakistani influence. Is it Pakistan still? has had more influence here than America. But Pakistan wouldn't have the guts to do what they did if they didn't have the blessings of America, right? In which case, what are we doing with such friendly relations with the Americans? Why don't we blacklist them as well? Uh -huh. if, if, no, seriously, come on. If the Americans are so detrimental to our national interest, then our national interest must trump all interests, right? Mm -hmm. So why well, then we should stop hugging the President of the United States of America. We should stop looking for their adulation. We should stop being so proud of the fact you that we address their Congress. You have been MOS, oh, oh no, my, no, so you then, know so then, so then, that there has to be some pragmatism as far as exactly. So then, So then what is wrong with them coming here and meeting us? It's pragmatic. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's pragmatic. <laughs> oh, well, right. At any point of time, would you have preferred to be in the Lok Sabha or in state? If you had a choice. I always have a choice. I always have a choice. Uh, ultimately, whoever fights an election does it out of their own choice. Nobody can hold my hand and get me to sign a piece of paper. Uh, so if I'm fighting an assembly election, I'm doing it by choice. Now, I don't even know if I had won Baramullah, because now it's hypothetical. If I had won Baramullah, uh, would I not be fighting the assembly elections? I don't know. I might still have fought them. Okay. Now you're fighting, uh, lastly, you're fighting from two areas. Everybody wants to know this, and I certainly am totally confused. Is Dr. Saab retired? Is he uh, chairman emeritus of no, the... No, he's the president of the party. He signs everybody's mandates. He's our star... Your style is... He's our star campaigner. Huh. Uh, nobody in, in Jammu and Kashmir, for sure, and very few politicians in the rest of the country uh, connect with the crowd or with people uh, the way he does. Uh, so, uh, where he leads, we follow. Okay. So, is it Omar's writ or is it Dr. Saab's writ in the... Uh, it's the party's writ. 
uh, right. uh, what we do, we do by consultation, we take views from everybody. Uh, ultimately, uh, then uh, all those views are put up to the president, as in any political party. And finally, if finally you, the president decides. If you win, who's going to be chief minister? The legislative party will decide. Don't give me such a political answer. No, but that, that is the truth. There is no difference between you and Akhilesh or, uh, or anybody else who gives me this answer. Can you just, for once, just tell me straight face? Straight face? That me. Know, my Can face is entirely straight. <laughs> and I am telling you that my clock stops at 5 p.m. 8th of October, which is when results will come out. Any conversations of post that period will be had post that period. I have had my sort of fingers burnt uh, in Baramulla by assuming that I know what is going to happen. I'm not making that mistake again. I am not taking anything for granted in this election. And therefore, any conversations about a post result scenario will be had post results. You almost sound like the BJP when they said Char so par and came to their senses after the election results. Which is why you haven't ever heard me put uh, a number. Hmm. Have I said 50 par, 60 par, 70 par, 80 par? Never. Uh, I have not put a number. National conference and our alliance group are fighting to win these elections. We want to win as many seats as possible. But I'm not going to be foolish enough to put a number on it uh, and then exceed that number. Exceed that number. I like the new optimism in Omar Abdullah. <laughs> I've always been optimistic. All right. On that note, thank you very much and all the very best thank to you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed listening to this conversation with Omar Abdullah held in the thick of election campaigning in Kashmir. Thank you for listening in. Namaste. Jai Hind. Click here to watch the previous episodes.